What is up guys, California Phantom. I'm here with the Autel Smart Controller, here to answer all the in-depth questions with a thorough review. Let's talk about it. Perfectly balanced, as all things should be. So with all things Autel, we heard the announcement for the smart controller. A lot of time went by. We had little glimpses of a controller similar to this with the Dragonfish, um, which is a, another aerial platform more suited for commercial use. But the entire community ra rallied around this thing. I know many of them applied the pressure. We were demanding a controller like the DJI smart controller. Uh, the Triptech tablets, the alternative means to getting what we were after were just not cutting it. And Autel is finally, finally, after this slow, slow rollout, um, as with all their products that tend to be late, they finally delivered this smart controller. I was a, a day one pre-order, but ended up almost two months late with this thing. I'm not exactly sure how it was broken down or how it delivered to things, but it was a giant, giant mess. Be that what it may, as as much trouble as it took to, for Autel to deliver this to me, it was worth every single penny, in my opinion, and I'm going to explain to you why. Up until this point, I really had only one option, which was the live deck. The live deck coupled with a high nits uh, field monitor was my alternative to using a trip tech or some third party hobbled together lift Thor sort of situation that many of you guys are experiencing now. Um, I know when they announced this thing, the aspect ratio, the nits and the battery life was the immediate jump out point and the selling point to me. The 1199 was kind of a pause for me, but given the size of the unit and what I was hoping for in this unit, I believe personally that Autel delivered on every front. Here we are at Bartholomew. I'm just a party of one, so it's going to be a little bit rougher today, but I do have the Sony X3000 with me. We're going to do your prototypical setup with this smart controller. So I know a lot of people were asking me initially, what does the setup look like with this controller? So here it is in all its glory. I'm gonna set up the straps first because that seems to be the most sought after question. So lining up the, knee, the Autel badge, just put it over my neck, sling it over my neck, flip it over like so, and then feed the, the, uh, the button strap through it. Now, there was a few people on here complaining about the redundancy clips and I personally don't like these button clips but um, instead of clipping these to this which or underneath here I'm not sure why you do that they they, they still they still work under here so I mean do what you want but for me I'm having the button strap going as the primary and the, these two clasps will just be a redundancy so that all of the wear and tear will be on that little tiny clasp area and not this big wonderful anodized piece of metal on the handle itself so I don't know if you guys can see that on this camera it's a little bad but they, they just unscrew from the handle area here again I apologize for the wind folks but um forgot my dead kitten for this lav mic so I apologize but yeah you just simply screw these on and that is it 
green buttons off to the side, let you know it's fully charged. I'm not taking this off yet because I do have a custom screen protector on order. I'm gonna put a URL as soon as I get that uh, in the description, so expect to see that. But we'll just let this guy go and while we're setting up the drone. Now I'm not gonna go fall out with Experience this drone. that, so I'm gonna shift over to the Autel app. And as you can see, it's really crispy. Um, I've updated the firmware already on here. Um, it's important to note that the over-the-air firmware is the only route to go on this drone or on this controller. It's a requirement. Uh, I tried to do the SDK, or not SDK, I tried to do the bin file uh, upload the typical way for firmware updates and it did not work for this controller. So anyone having a scroll wheel issue where your scroll wheel is not responsive, um, that's what it's from. You have to do the over the air update only exclusively. We're gonna get it out in the sunlight here so you can see it in a moment, but you can see how big this screen is. Um, you know, as far as aspect ratio, you're not going to see like, everything that you see in this screen is going to be there on the final product. There's no cropping. So like when you're using cell phone, you're using your iPhone, Android phones, you're going to have crops on the top and bottom and some on the sides, depending on what phone you have with this, there is no cropping. So we're going to just get this in the sky. I do have a warning that the gimbal is not ready. So. I do have a safe to fly, so that's the important thing. IMU's already been pre-done. Um, make sure you do your IMU, then your compass, then follow it up with the uh, gimbal calibration. So you're gonna get this up. I pre-programmed the C2 to turn off obstacle avoidance. And I do that for work purposes because I, a lot of times I'm landing in uh, pretty tight spots. So I do like the auditory. Um, let's me know that I'm close to something, but it won't stop me from running into it. So let's get back over with all my gear so I don't get it stolen, giving me anxiety. But I, I don't know if you guys can see from this distance, but get this guy over here a little bit. All right, turn this back on, but. I know you see a little bit of bubbles and stuff, but that's strictly from the screen protector that came with it. But we're in the middle of the summer here in Elk Grove. I'm trying to find a real sunny spot. As you can tell, there's just no, no problem. I can do all of my full image composition with this drone. Now, something to take note is this improved scroll wheel. Um, I cannot begin to tell you how much better it is over the original the original controller. The original one was snappy. It felt like it had too much spring on it. This one is definitely feels more like DJI. It has a lot, it has, I'd say about 25% more travel distance, maybe a little bit less than that, but more importantly, it's just not snappy at all. It's just really smooth. So when you are doing these, uh, these shots where you're coming up, and you have that gimbal roll as you're coming, like this one here, you command a lot more evenness about that shot. Like I, I, I know for, for the original one, it's just difficult, it's just difficult to do. Um, everything's set to auto. Like I said, I'm not really gonna worry too much about the composition side of things getting that right. I'd have NDs on it if I did. It's really bright out here in Elk Grove. So we're just trying to test. I know several YouTubers, I was reading videos on this, not liking the sticks, but I don't know if you guys can see this, but they got, they got rubber washers on them that really make this a lot more smoother than the original that, that tend to be snappier. They're just, they just, everything's smoother about this is the best way to to lump this in a nutshell. Yeah, overall, I'm just really impressed with this. I would certainly say the sticks are more superior than the original controller. The wheels on the side are more superior. Um, if I had a criticism, I'd say 
If you're not a pincher, like if you're a pincher, this is ideal because you throw your fingers on these scroll wheels and you have full control, right? I'm still sort of a controller kind of guy, you know, gaming controller. So I'm still sort of a thumbs tops. Um, and that makes the scroll wheel a little in the middle of my finger rather than the tip. If I have it on the tip, then it becomes an issue for hitting the record and not record or stop record. I wish the scroll wheel was a little bit higher and maybe the C C1 and C2's a little bit on the outside, like a little bit, moved a little bit over. Um, minor, minor criticism given, given the, uh, the spectacular nature of this. Um, another thing I'm noticing right off the bat too is I'm not getting any sort of signal strength on the screen. So that's something that obviously they're gonna have to address right away. Um, you know, it, it really, it's, I think it's imperative that uh, you know how far out or how far away you are as your signal is depleting because you have the flight time of what's you know remaining you have your height you have your distance and obviously you have your speed but where is the uh the signal um you know that's that's a problem preface this by saying I will be reviewing this more thoroughly in regards to the distance. Um, I haven't heard a single soul complain about the transmission on this thing, but I will be doing a range test to compare the original controller to the smart controller. So I believe the original controller claims something like seven kilometers and the, the new smart controller is 10 kilometers. So uh, realistically this should get me more distance on the same flight path so we're gonna we're gonna put that to the test in the next video and that's pretty much it guys I hope you enjoyed this video please hit that like and subscribe if you haven't already go ahead and drop me a comment down below letting me know if you've pre-ordered this controller maybe you're on the fence and this puts you over go ahead I love hearing from you guys drop me a comment down below and we'll be catching you on the next adventure